what micronutrients do you need to get more of our keto, and what are the sources in which you can get them? Well, we've come to the conclusion of which ones we need by looking at a couple of studies. Okay, there's few studies, but I don't want to go into a lot of detail with all of them because it would be a 20-minute video. So I'll reference the one that outlines it the most, and it was published in the journal Sports. Okay, so this study took a look at a high-carb diet versus a low-carb diet alongside 11 hours of endurance work throughout the course of the week. Okay, so they were working hard and one was eating carbs, one was not. Okay, well, it set out to determine what the dietary intake was like. Like, were they consuming less of specific things? In the low-carb keto group, they were consuming less in the way of manganese, they were consuming less in the way of thiamine, consuming less in the way of zinc, and also consuming less in the way of copper. Now, a lot of times with keto, it simply has to do with the fact that you're not getting enough diversity with your food. Okay, having a lower intake of a micronutrient doesn't mean that you have a micronutrient deficiency, okay? It does not mean that you're automatically like totally destroyed and that you can't have success. It means that you need to eat a wide variety of foods. The hard part with keto is we run into the situation where it's easy to just eat processed stuff, it's easy to just eat cheese and meat and not get the diversity that you need. So let's address these one by one. First up, potassium. Where are you gonna increase your potassium levels? Okay, leafy greens. Don't forget the bananas. They're not gonna help you out here because they have the carbs. Okay, so leafy greens, number one. Tomato, okay, you just gotta keep it in check because of the carb content. Avocado, one of the best ones that you possibly can. Nuts, I would typically lean towards like uh, Brazil nuts. I would lean towards uh, hazelnuts. I would lean towards macadamia nuts. Poultry and fish and mushrooms, okay? Plus you're getting the beta-glucans out of that too. So if you're trying to like restore potassium, you may wanna kinda get those levels up. Okay, let's jump over to thiamine next. Now thiamine is interesting because thiamine can also help you out with utilizing carbs better. So when you're on keto, it's easy to become a little bit deficient or consume less in the way of thiamine because it's rich in whole grains, right? So you're not gonna be able to like be eating those whole grains to get that thiamine in. Well, again, kind of a catch 22 because you're not eating the grains, you don't really need the thiamine for it, but still, it's still an important nutrient. So in this case, you're looking at things like liver, things like muscles, nutritional yeast is a great one, put it on your asparagus, put it on whatever food. Okay, brewer's yeast as well is also really good. Then we have pork. Pork is really rich in thiamine. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have some carbohydrates, I need a little bit better metabolism with it, pork might not be a bad idea there. And then lastly, sunflower seeds are not bad either. You just don't wanna overdo it because the omega-6 quality is in it. Okay, now let's talk about manganese for a second. Manganese levels across the different studies that I've looked at investigating micronutrient deficiencies and micronutrient intake levels seems to be even across the board. Manganese seems to be the one that for some reason we decrease intake on. So with manganese, we see once again, leafy greens. So we're seeing that across the board as sort of a common denominator. Now with berries, you can get some manganese as well. And remember on keto, you can have a small amount of berries. You can have a half a cup a day. It's not the end of the world. Okay, the fructose isn't gonna kick you out of keto in that small amount. Avocados again, but two interesting ones, tea, most black tea and green tea is going to have a decent amount of manganese and also seaweed, okay, which you're also getting a bunch of other minerals that are good too. So it's easy to kind of balance these things out. So hopefully you're taking all of these, taking some notes and starting to apply them to your diet and make it sort of a well-crafted keto diet. Then we have zinc, okay? Now zinc you can get in a lot of different seeds and nuts, okay? But namely pumpkin seeds, that is usually my jam. And by the way, a lot of the foods that I'm talking about, you can get through Thrive Market, okay? They're today's video sponsor. I figured it was very relevant since a lot of the good keto foods that I recommend, you can get through Thrive Market. It's no one in particular, but a lot of the ones I talk about in general. So Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. There's a link down below, so you can save 25% off your first order, but then also get a free gift. So you have to use that link that's down below in the description. So you can log on, you can sort by keto. So if you needed to find, say, pumpkin seeds, or you wanted to find some kale chips, or something that's help you out on keto to kind of balance it out a little bit more, I'm sure you can find it. Okay, so that link is down below and a big thank you to Thrive Market for being an awesome sponsor. Okay, so then we also have eggs, we also have fish, and one of the big ones when it comes down to zinc is actually spinach. But you have to remember that with spinach, again, you have to heat it, you have to cook it. Raw spinach has a high amount of oxalates which are going to chelate minerals. So it's a very important note cook your spinach. That way you can get the minerals out of it. And the big one is copper. This is the one that concerns me a little bit more because with copper, you're, it's hard to replenish if you're not getting greens in. 
But also, it's one of those things that if you're not doing keto right, eventually you can become pretty deficient in copper, and that could pose an issue, because copper plays a big role with balancing out zinc and other very important factors in the body, especially when it is involved as a cofactor for so many different things. So you can also find it in mushrooms quite a bit, okay? So like shiitake mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, things like that. And also organ meats, so things like liver, okay? You're gonna get that copper in. It becomes pretty universally known that if you really want to get a lot of the mineral profiles that you should be getting on keto, you really do need to start leaning into the organ meats a little bit more or at least supplementing them. Okay, and the reason that I say that is because when you start consuming that kind of diet, carnivore, keto, anything like that, think about it. Like, you're not going to get all the minerals and vitamins that you need just from muscle meat. Okay, in fact, the methionine content of muscle meat could actually end up causing an issue over time. So you have to balance it out with the other minerals to make it really complete. So are you going to be deficient in these things if you don't like, get them immediately? No, it's gonna take a long time. And there is an initial study that was published in the journal Nutrition that demonstrated that the RDI of a lot of these minerals and vitamins decreased really fast, like within 12 weeks, like people were consuming less. But the serum levels of these vitamins and minerals didn't change. Okay, so meaning your body adapts, you're not gonna necessarily end up in an immediate deficiency, but you are gonna put yourself in a spot where you're not consuming as much of these, which in time could lead to a deficiency. But the most important thing is, is that this gives you a framework for the foods, the fruits, the vegetables, the fats to add in to balance it all out. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.